Uh, hi there, this is uh, Raja. Thanks again for uh, joining me. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a chat application that uses uh, RabbitMQ to perform PubSub. So the agenda here is, uh, first I'll cover what RabbitMQ is and why you should even care about it. And then uh, I'm going to go over a Socket.io and Redis-based um, chat app that we built in a previous video because it has a lot of features that we can reuse in the, in the current app. Okay, uh, what is uh, RabbitMQ and why should we even care about it? RabbitMQ is an Erlang-based uh, open source message broker. So the main purpose of RabbitMQ is to quickly and reliably send data from point A where there may be one or more producers to point B where there may be one or more consumers. So why should we use it? Let's say if you're building a stock-based app or a financial app or email application where you care about both speed and reliability of every single message, then you should go with RabbitMQ. And secondly, RabbitMQ provides various message delivery features out of the box, like uh, durability, acknowledgements, mandatory messages, etc. And it also makes it easier to build lots of uh, messaging apps like PubSub applications, worker queues, RPC applications, etc. For more, go to rabbitmq.com slash getting started to know about all kinds of uh, applications that you can build and um, learn a lot more about uh, RabbitMQ itself. Uh, next, I'm going to give you a quick overview of uh, what we have built so far and then we'll go from there. So in the previous video, we built a chat application that had a that had two pages, a login page where user can log in and a chat widget where user can chat. But in the back end, architecturally, it was doing a lot more things. That's why we're reusing it in this video as well. Okay, let me quickly go over all the various pieces. First of all, the application itself is an express app and it uses Socket.io to send messages back and forth between browser and the server. And we are using Sticky Sessions JSON ID to make Socket.io work in a proxied environment like Cloud Foundry. Let's see how it works. Okay, so when the user logs in from the browser, so the username is actually stored in a session in within Redis itself. And after the login, Socket.io gets connected and whenever the user sends messages like join or any chat message, Socket.io gets that message and it gets the username from the session using Socket Sessions module and it asks Redis to perform pops up to send this chat message or join notification to other users. And what we are going to do in this video is to swap the Redis pops up with RabbitMQ's pops up. Uh, we'll still keep Redis as session store and we'll keep all other features as is. Okay, let's uh, take a quick look at the existing code and then I will show you what are the things that we are going to change. Uh, this is an Express app and here we are setting up the Express and uh, Socket.io and we are also setting some of the configurations for Socket.io like uh, transports to XHR polling and the log level to 1. Here we are setting up two Redis clients to do PubSub. So this piece we are going to change uh, to use uh, RabbitMQ later in the video. And here we are creating Redis store uh, to store sessions. And over here we are setting up all the middlewares for Express. Again, the cookie parser and Express sessions in order to have uh, sticky sessions. And we are listening to a HTTP post to slash user. So whenever a user logs in, we store that in a session. And then here we are setting up session sockets. So this is what we are going to use to grab the session from Express Sessions and give it to Socket.io over here. And then we have two functions. One is socket that is listening for chat messages. And the other one is listening for user joining. And the third one here is waiting for any messages from uh, Redis and sending it back to the browser itself. So we'll be changing these three functions to use uh, RabbitMQ's counterparts. And uh, before I start coding, I thought I'll give you a quick overview of RabbitMQ's basics, especially because I think many of you are completely new to RabbitMQ. 
Uh, so here are some of the general rules. Uh, producers and consumers don't talk directly to each other. Producer simply sends any messages that it wants to send uh, to the exchange. And exchange figures out which queue it should deliver the message to. And consumer simply picks up the messages from these queues. Now from Node.js perspective, we can use uh, Node AMQP module. Uh, you can actually install it using Node install AMQP. Okay, let's first see how to create this exchange and how to send some data to this exchange. To do that, first we'll create a connection to RabbitMQ uh, by doing amqp.create connection and we get a connection to RabbitMQ. And using that connection, we create an exchange by saying connection.exchange can give it a name and some options and there's also a callback which uh, provides reference to the exchange itself. So once we get a reference to the exchange, we can then publish data by saying exchange.publish and some key and this data. So this key is interesting. So here you are asking exchange to only send this data to consumers that might be listening to this routing key. But uh, depending on what kind of exchange you have created, the exchange might actually ignore your request because uh, RabbitMQ provides three different kinds of exchanges. One is a direct and the second one is fan out and the third one is topic. In uh, direct exchanges, the producer and consumer needs to have exact same keys um, or the routing key and the binding key should match exactly. In a fan out exchange, uh, if you specify any routing key that will be ignored and any message that you send to fan out will be sent to all consumers. Whereas in a topic exchange, the consumer can have some regular expressions in it and exchange matches uh, the routing key and the binding key based on some regular expressions and it will uh, decide whether it is whether to deliver the message or to that particular queue or not. Going back again, so there's another way you can create the same publishers um, or the producers. So you can create a connection and while creating the connection, you can specify that I'm going to use a default exchange, amq.topic. And if you're using a default exchange, then you don't need to say exchange.publish like here, but instead you can say connection.publish directly. And finally, let's talk about um, creating consumers. So creating consumers involves three steps. This is mainly because RabbitMQ provides a lot of flexibilities and features. So first we can create a queue by calling connection dot queue and you can give a queue name and there are a whole bunch of options you can, pro you can provide and get a reference to queue. And after step one, we have just created these red boxes here. So in step two, we are going to say q.bind and provide an exchange name. And if it is a default exchange, then we don't need to pass the exchange name. And secondly, we'll pass a binding key. So if the binding key or the binding key's regular expression matches the routing key, then you get the message delivered. So after step two, we have created these red boxes and these arrows. So in step three, we are going to say q.subscribe. Here we are saying, okay, once the message gets delivered, call this function. So that, that's basically these two arrows here. And that's how the messages are delivered from producer to consumer. Again, I encourage you to go to RabbitMQ's uh, website and learn more about it. Okay, let's uh, go back to coding. To save time, I have actually already made changes. So I'll just quickly go over what changes I have made. So firstly, I have added AMQP module to our package.json. Okay, so first of all, what I have done here is to create a connection to our RabbitMQ server. Notice that I am passing an empty object, which means to use a default connection to RabbitMQ. And once we get the connection, I am creating an exchange by name chat exchange. Because this is a simple pub sub, we can create an exchange with a unique name and ask all the consumers to simply connect directly to this chat exchange. And I'm saying the type of the exchange is fan out. Uh, fan out means 
send anything that comes to the exchange to all the consumers. And I have commented the Redis pub sub section here. And when a user sends a chat message, I'm saying exchange not publish with an empty routing key all the chat message. Because we have a fan out exchange, the routing key doesn't really matter. And I'm doing the same thing when a user joins as well. So, so far we have set up a fan out exchange and we also set up a producer. So let's go ahead and create the queues and the consumers. Okay, so to create a queue, all we need to say is uh, connection.queue and we can pass a name. I'm passing uh, empty name for the queue because uh, then RabbitMQ will generate a random name for us. And I'm saying exclusive true option. Uh, all it does is to say that this queue can only be used by this current connection. And once the queue gets created, I am binding that to the chat exchange that we created earlier. And I'm also binding that to a pound sign, which means listens to all the channels. Finally, I am saying uh, queue.subscribe, which means once I get a message, do socket.emit and send back that message to the browser. And one important thing to notice here is this whole creating of queue and binding and subscribing is actually done within uh, session sockets that are on connections, which means every time a socket IO uh, connection is open, uh, we create a queue uh, for that specific socket. Otherwise, we will end up sharing the same queue uh, with uh, multiple browsers. Okay, uh, let's push this to Cloud Foundry. I'm going to use uh, four instances, node application, node 0.8, 64MB memory, the URL is fine by me, yes. First I want to use a RabbitMQ service, which is number 5, that name is fine by me. And then we also need uh, Redis because we are, use, we are using Redis as a session store. So let's use uh, Redis 2.6, which is number 6. Uh, that random name is fine by me. Save configuration, yes. Let's test if it is uh, running. Okay, it is uh, running and using four instances, 64 MB each, and it is using uh, two services, Redis and a RabbitMQ service. Okay, let's uh, test it out. So one, user two, no, five. Okay, so it's uh, all working. Okay, just to summarize what we did today, um, we start off with um, learning what RabbitMQ is and why we should even care about it. And then we went over a previous chat application that was using Socket.io and Express and Redis PubSub. And then I also talked about uh, RabbitMQ basics, uh, especially from Node.js perspective. And finally, we swapped Redis PubSub with uh, RabbitMQ PubSub, like this one. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to contact me at my email or on Twitter at uh, rajarao.tv. Thank you.